Now, we are going to start by prayer, and there will be calling on Isaac. Come and pray for us. What 
enjoy that? Okay, Auntie, we want you to come out and lead the congregation in that song. Just ring. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Yes. We still have three memory verses. Thank you. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Amen. Amen. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Amen. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born shall be of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Luke chapter one verse thirty-five. Amen. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, Amen. and shall bring forth a son, Amen. and they shall call his name Emmanuel, Amen. which be interpreted God with, is God with us. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. Amen. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you enjoyed that. Okay, so it's been wonderful so far. You enjoy the kiddies, the word. I love it when children read the word. It has potency, it has power. May God bless them. Um, this is a different children's presentation this year. We're not actually following the traditional Christmas story, but we have a play, a musical with a Christmas message. And this Christmas message is so important because this season is all about giving and less of receiving. The title of our program tonight is The Mysterious Christmas Card. It's mysterious because four children are back from school and all of a sudden they get to their house, one, the house of one of them, and they discover a mysterious Christmas card. This Christmas card leads them to do so many wonderful things which I don't want you to go into, but I will wait for you to stand back, enjoy, and watch. They're going to start with a song. They're going to start with a song, and they now know that God bless them. Let's be praying along. Thank you.
one of the children. A card that would lead them on an adventure to the post office, the home of an elderly widow, and a church dinner for the homeless. In the musical, the children truly learn the real meaning of Christmas. Man, I'm really glad Miss Bingham let us trade our gifts this year. Jason really wanted the Game Boy game I got, and I really wanted the CD that he got. The girls didn't trade gifts this year. We all like what we got. That's just because you girls all like the same stuff anyway. That's not true. Please, I would never like the same things as Penny Milton. She likes football cards and bubblegum. Yuck! Nina, what did you get? I never got a chance to ask you yet. I got a lovely Christmas jumper. It's lovely and it's green and red. Yeah, if you're an elf. Ronnie, what did you get? I traded with Albert and got this great football. Boys and sports, you'll think that's the whole meaning of Christmas. I got these lovely pair of trainers. Well, I guess at least we all got what we wanted. Yeah, except for two extra weeks of Christmas vacation, I'd have to agree. Well, since I beat everyone to the mailbox today, I get to open the mail. I love getting mail, don't you? Let's see what I got today. Bill, advertisement, advertisement, bill. Hey, look, it says we may already won 10,000 sweepstakes. Eh, it won't ever happen anyways. Bill, advertisement, advertisement, bills, advertisement. Hey, guys, look at this. Is it a love letter from Chap? He likes you, you know. Leave her alone. So what is it? It's some sort of Christmas card. To Anna, Nina, Ronnie and Calvin, the, the Christmas gift you want to find is not one that's on your mind. It's not beneath your Christmas tree. It's not a gift that you can see. The first clue is not up for sale. Find it where there's lots of mail. An envelope awaits for you. Let's see if you'll know what to do. P.S. Don't turn the page until you have completed the first assignment. A mystery? I love mysteries. Do you think this is a hoax? Someone's idea of a practical joke? Even if it is, it would be great to find out what it is. It said the first clue is, up for is not up for sale. Find it where there's lots of mail. Well, that would be Arna's mailbox, but everything else is just junk mail or bills, except for this 10 million pound sweepstakes you may have already won. I don't think that's it. So where else would there be lots of mail? The, the post, post office! office. 
Let's see if old Mr. Deegan will have a letter on us on hold. Yeah, it's only one block away. Let's go. I'm as busy as a beaver, as nervous as a bride. With Christmas showing closer, I've got nowhere to hide. The pile is getting higher, the package is deep, the nights are getting shorter, and I'm losing lots of sleep. So many people depending on me, it almost makes me faint. But as long as I'm done before December 24, I'll be a post office saint. My mailbox getting heavy, I'm almost out of stamps. I've hauled so many packages, my legs are getting cramps. I'm working triple overtime and every weekend too, because the Christmas season has made this place a zoo. A Merry Christmas is always our goal until my job is done. But I will not rest before December 24. I promise every. Well, everyone. Because of the sun, all he's as good as his flesh. The four kids now arrive at the post office where they have a little dialogue with the postman. Let's listen and see what unfolds. Hello children, off from school early today? Yes sir, not a moment too soon. Hi Mr. Deegan, looks like things are pretty slow for this time of year. Where is everyone? Well, it's always a little slow before the lunch rush. Come three o'clock and it will start picking up again. What can I do for you? We're kind of hoping you're expecting us. You don't say. We thought maybe there might be an envelope here for all of us. Hmm, let's see. I keep pretty good track of these things, you know. Not one piece of mail comes through this box without me knowing where it's supposed to end up. Hmm, there was a postcard that arrived here this morning. It looks like a little child wrote it. I was going to send it back. No, don't send it back. That's the one. That's the one we're looking for. Can we have it? Oh, well, I'm really not supposed to... Right, here you go. Thank you. Dear Santa, I hope you get this letter in time for Christmas. I'm not real good at writing, so it took me quite a long time to look up some of these words. Anyways, I need to talk to you about Christmas. See, my mummy and daddy got divorced last year, and my mummy said daddy disappeared off the face of the earth, leaving her with three kids and no money. I feel bad for my brother and sister. All the other kids at school get great presents at Christmas, but last year they didn't get anything at all. My older brother Jacob is nine years old, and my, sis and my sister Glenda is ten years old. Santa, I really don't need anything for myself, because when I get bored of my stuff, when, I get, when Jacob and Glenda get tired of their stuff, they hand it over to me. But I was hoping you could send them a couple of things. Jacob and Glenda, to Jacob and Glenda, I'd be really happy if you could do that. Yours truly, Bobby Sandler. 
My younger brother would never write such a nice letter. I wish I could have Bobby for a brother. Yeah, but what can we do? Sure, it's too bad. Although, no, you guys won't go for it. What? What is it? Yeah, if you have something in your mind, let's hear it. That would be first, bringing with an original thought. <laughs> Very funny, Nina. All right, I'll just tell you. I think we should send the gifts that we got to Bobby and his family. Well, the Christmas card did say we'll know what to do. And I suppose we'll be getting lots of other presents just two days from now. And I guess I could listen to my other CDs for a few more weeks. Great, I've got, I've got some coins and a, a coupon for free french fries at McDonald's. I've got 20p. I've got 30p. And I don't have anything. Okay, so let's see. All together, that is 67p. Can we send a package in for 67p? I'll tell you what. I love them. Free French fries at McDonald's. Give me the free fries coupon and I'll send the package. It's a deal. Mr. Deegan will need a box and tape and some selling, um, some scissors. Just like my wife. Always ordering me around.
packaged with love, the kids still have a little more to unravel. Let's stay tuned as they continue to find out what's on the next page of the mysterious card. Now we can look at the next page of the Christmas card. Are you sure we want to? Come on, Calvin, live a little. I feel great knowing that, um, that Bobby and his family will have a little brighter Christmas. I guess you're right. Go ahead, Anna, read the next clue. The second clue is that you must greet is down this road past 2nd Street where waiting on a rocking chair is one whose heart is in despair. Go quickly now and don't delay to make one glad on Christmas Day. What's past 2nd Street? Nothing really. The only thing down there is the Millie's auto repair shop, the laundromat and oh boy! What's oh boy? Yeah, come on, what else is down there? That's where old Lady Pringle lives. I'm afraid of her. She's always chasing us out of her flower garden when, in the summer when we cross behind her house to the rec centre. Do you think that's who we're supposed to make glad? What do you do for an old lady to make her glad anyway? Just stay out of her yard, probably. I know, let's go Caroline. So expect to hear that when she hears our croaking voices, she wouldn't call the police instead. Well, do you have a better solution? I don't, I guess I do. Put on your mittens and your warm walk up. It's time to wake up from your winter's nap. Take along the beach pipe to help us stay in tune. And we'll all go caroling beneath a winter.
don't want to bother you, Mrs. Priggle. Nonsense. I've got some freshly baked cookies on the kitchen table. Look after me, show me the way to the kitchen. Halvin, stop being such a hog. And is there any milk to go along with that? How about some hot chocolate? Will that do? You mean the kind of the little marshmallows? Is there any other way to have hot chocolate? Yay, let's, let's go! go. I was sitting in my rocking chair a few minutes ago, thinking very sad thoughts. A matter of fact, I was almost in tears. Why? What happened? Were you sick or something? No, I was just thinking about my life a couple of years ago, when my husband Arnold, God rest his soul, and my son and, my, and his wife were still around. That was the last happy Christmas I could remember. I baked some cookies this afternoon, hoping to give them to the homeless shelter because I think that could really help people. You children have really brightened up my Christmas, you know. I'm so happy you've came. Wow, this is so amazing. What, that's Miss Prugal like for singing so much? No, not that. The fact that we've been able to figure out two of the things on the Christmas card. How much more is there? Well, there's only one page left. Should I read it? I guess you'd better, otherwise we'll never get to the bottom of all this. Yes, please read it. Okay. If you've come this far, and have succeeded. I know my words have been well heeded. There's one more clue for you to search. It's time to hurry to the church. I guess we're going to the church then. That's good. I'm getting hungry. Maybe we can scarf down some of the child they're feeding the homeless people. What? You just stuffed your face with cookies? That's how men are, Nina. They eat, sleep and complain. They work too much. Some women too, you know. Yeah, just like the people at the homeless dinner. I bet they've never done a single day's work. Don't be too hasty to judge people, children. After all, you thought I was a mean old witch, didn't you? Miss Piggle is right. I bet there's another clue waiting for us at the church. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. So the children make their way to the church hall and at the church hall they wait a bit they wait a bit while the homeless people who have been under the shelter for a very long time some of them have actually been in the cold some of them have been seriously wounded at Christmas but there's opportunities for them to have a little bit of soup, some noodles, and a little bit of food. <laughs> Pastor, D, pa Pastor Pete always takes care of these people on a Sunday at church. It's a very good thing Pastor Pete does. At this point, the children go in. What brings you children to our homeless dinner? Want a taste of my wife's pot stew? We're not here to eat pasta. Pastor Pete, where have all these people come from? I've never seen them before. Calvin, these people have had sad lives. For example, look at that young mum over there. Her name is Nora. Nora's husband was a construction worker. He died in an automobile accident. They had no insurance and live in a small apartment. They're going to get thrown out of their apartment unless Nora can find a way to work. She's a wonderful artist, you know. I think I'm figuring out the final piece of this Christmas puzzle. Nina, I think I know what you're going to say, and I couldn't agree more. I think we should help baby babysit Nina's children. Between all of us, it would only be once a week. That's an excellent Christmas present. You know, I just had a thought. Jesus never really owned a home, so it's kind of homeless too. He lived his whole life without a street address, yet he had more to give others than anyone who ever lived. Yeah, it's really amazing that Jesus didn't have much himself, but he had more to offer than anyone else who ever lived. He's really the most amazing per homeless person that ever lived. Oh, okay. 
the children are beginning to understand some sort of pattern here and they have a little bit more to reveal. Let's stay back and watch what they have up their sleeves. Have you guys noticed a pattern here? It seems like wherever this card has led us, we've actually been able to give something away rather than receiving something. I never realized how easy it was to to give to others, but now I know that Christmas is really about giving, and giving is much more better than receiving. Well, let's not get too carried away. I still like opening presents on Christmas morning, but I do agree, this has been a great experience of all of us. Hey look, it looks like Mr. Deegan is helping old Lady Priggle here. No, but I don't think that's very important anymore. What's important is that we've learned the real meaning of Christmas. We've learned that people are more important than presents. And that giving is more important than receiving. And that the birth of Jesus is the reason why we all have to celebrate Christmas. I couldn't imagine a better way to celebrate Christmas. Even me and Mrs. Prickle feel like little kids when it comes to celebrating Christmas. We are all part of this celebration, young, old, and in between. This celebration reaches into every corner of earth and every nation. This truly is a major celebration. Oh,
Well, Lord, I'm not sure why you sent this Christmas card to me or my friends, but I'm sure glad you sent it like you sent Jesus 2,000 years ago. Not many people believe in you anymore, Lord. It's very sad. If only they knew what they were missing out on. Anyways, this Christmas card has taught us a valuable lesson that we should give more to others and think less about what others should give to us. This is what this Christmas card has taught us tonight. And by the way, happy birthday. Did you enjoy that? Yes. It's going to be a great Christmas this year. Yes. And I really, really hope that, you know, this will change your mindset totally, even for the children, about Christmas. Amen. 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 May it be that this Christmas, instead of you telling mommy and daddy, oh, what am I going to get? Oh, what am I going to get? Oh, what am I going to get? You're going to change that to, what am I going to give? So you're going you're gonna to take, take your microscope, your telescope, your glasses, and you're going to go on a hunt. And the hunt you're going to go on this year, you're going to find someone who you can do something for who can't pay you back. Someone you've never given any, anything before. Someone you've never, you, it's, it could be anyone, but do it for the sake of God. Because Jesus came, he came, he came and he gave us everything. Amen. That we might gain everything. Amen. Look at something that Jesus said and I want you to reason with me. Matthew chapter 25 Verse 42. Matthew 25, verse 42. This is Jesus speaking. For I was hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. 44. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. 46, the last verse. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into, end, into, eternal, into life eternal. You know, I pray that we won't fall into this trap. I pray that this Christmas will change our mentality, change our mindset. The first thing we really need to give Jesus, because it's about giving, is giving him our heart. This heart must be saved. Come what may. Before we depart this planet Earth, we must have the stamp of God 
on our hearts that we've been forgiven. May you take this opportunity of Christmas, sort yourself out with God. If you still feel guilty for your sins, ask Jesus to forgive you and he will have mercy on you. We're going to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So as you kneel or come to pray, we're going to sing again. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. And may God bless you. Come on, children. Let's sing the last song again. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy Merry